expert. We'd like to take you through the exhibit today and tell you a few things about amphibians. First off, a lot of people don't know what amphibians are. Um, they hear the word, they know the, they know it, but they don't necessarily know what it means. Uh, amphibians are a group of animals that undergo a major ch change in their life called a metamorphosis. Usually that happens when they're young. Um, a good example of that is a tadpole for a frog. When they grow, they have when they're born, they're a, a tadpole. And they have gills, and they breathe, live in the water, don't have any limbs. As they mature, they grow arms, legs, they lose their tail, and they actually grow lungs and lose their gills and move to land and become the frog you know of. Lots of amphibians do this. Uh, other things that make an amphibian an amphibian are the eggs themselves. They have a gelatinous egg mass instead of a hard egg like a chicken or a lizard with that hard outer casing. And also they have non-scaled bodies. They have a kind of a slimy, wet body that allows them to actually use their skin as a breathing organ and a, and a way to take up water and the environment around them. And also, unfortunately, they can soak up lots of chemicals and toxic things that we'll talk more about later. Um, Eve is really good with her local stuff, so let's talk to her about that. Eve? Yeah. Um, we're really excited in the... Um, you we're here in the new amphibians exhibit at Shedd Aquarium. Um, you can see just a little bit of it behind us. Um, but we're really excited to bring all of these different amphibians in, and I um, am particularly excited about all of the Midwest native ones, all of the Great Lakes species, Illinois, Chicagoland area um, amphibians, and we have several of them on display here. You can come see them as soon as this Saturday we open up, um, and you'll be able to see everybody. Um, some of my favorites that are going to be on display are the siren. I don't know if sirens are awesome. I don't know if, if you guys are as into the sirens as I am, but they are um, a specialized type of salamander. They live in Illinois. They're all across the region, but you don't see them. So few people know that they even exist. They only have front legs. They don't have any back legs, um, and they look like a long, thin eel. They live entirely in the water. Um, they have external gills. Really unique features about this animal. Um, so you'll be able to see them on display um, when and realize that they might be living in your own backyard. Um, so hopefully, as people come and, and visit amphibians, you'll be able to connect with some of these animals, see what's living around us, see what's living around the world, um, and and see what you can do about amphibians um, yourself. So I'm pretty excited about the opening. Cool. So there's, as you mentioned, there's a lot of animals that are local to our, our area here, uh, tiger salamanders, bullfrogs, which most people know of. But there's also a lot of animals from around the world. There's going to be a giant uh, Japanese salamander, over two and a half foot long, weighs about 30 pounds. It's the second largest amphibian rivers and streams in Japan, mostly. These animals have a large flat head, and they're uh, ambush predators, sucking fish, turtles, uh, uh, frogs, and they've even been known to eat deer occasionally if they're crossing and can get one. Uh, amphibians in general are very generalist feeders, so if it's alive and moving in front of it and they think they can swallow it, they'll probably try and do it. That holds true for a lot of the frogs, too. Uh, one of the animals we have on display is called the cane toad. If you've ever heard of that one before, it's one that's been introduced. It's originally from the northern South America and has been introduced in Australia originally to control cane beetles, eat a beetle that was eating crops there. Unfortunately, when they introduced it, they had no natural predators, and populations exploded. Literally millions of frogs were born, and nothing wanted to eat them. Nothing eats these things because they produce a really nasty toxin on their back that can actually uh, kill mammals and it can kill people if you, if you ingest too much of it. But dogs are easily killed by it. So they don't have any wild dogs that would eat it or any other predators that would go after it. Lots of other really cool things. In general, most amphibians can produce uh, some, type of, some type of toxin as a protection. They're not fast moving. They're typically fairly small. Uh, another animal people are familiar with is the, uh, are the dart frogs. And they're given that name because uh, indigenous people from the Amazon would take their blow darts years ago and wipe it across the back of these animals and the toxin would be on the dart, and they could hunt and kill animals more, e more easily for food. Uh, another really cool adaptation is for uh, an animal we have called an Iberian newt. They're from uh, Spain, the Iberian Peninsula. They're a fully aquatic salamander, but they don't have gills. They actually go up to, uh, to breathe in the air. They can also crawl around outside a little bit, but they're mostly, mostly fully aquatic. The really cool adaptation these guys have is they have these orange spots on their side. Um, those are actually poison glands, and if they get really, really scared, if an animal tries to eat them, what they can literally do is break their own ribs, poke through those orange little sacks of poison, and whatever puts them in their mouth is like putting a mouthful of poisonous toothpicks in. So they're not something tasty you want to eat. And the animal can actually pull their broken ribs back in and reheal and, and go right about its business after that. Um, so those are some of the really cool adaptations some of these animals have. Yeah, really awesome, awesome stuff with all of our amphibians. And you were mentioning some of the um, eating habits of our animals. Um, 
what a lot of people don't realize when they visit is that we have a lot of our own food cultures in-house for these animals. Um, we're um, focused on sustainability and availability, nutrition, so we have um, veterinarians that help us with the nutrition of the animals and then um, you are what you eat and the quality of that food matters and so we raise a lot of everything from fruit flies and tiny baby crickets for our smallest animals um, all the way up to uh, uh, giant crickets and large hornworms and earthworms and all uh, kinds of things like that to make sure that everyone's getting a very diet. We, um, we give vitamins and uh, mineral supplements to many of our animals. Uh, so there's a lot of work that goes into the right. diets uh, of our animals in-house too so that they're not eating uh, <laughs> cra crazy uh, strange diets so right. it's all working out. Mentioning that, it's also one of our biggest jobs is to keep the animals healthy. As part of that, what we do, every animal that comes in the building gets a full medical exam by our veterinary staff and our quarantine staff. They also get x-rayed um, every animal so we get a baseline of what their skeleton looks like and can see how healthy they're growing as they get bigger and bigger. Because one of the problems with some of these animals is if they don't get the right nutrients, their skeleton doesn't grow nice and thick and dense and they're not very strong. So that helps us look at what they like when they came in and we can follow them over time making sure they're giving them the right nutrition. Uh, that we're growing in-house and that we purchase. Eve, you work in quarantine. How the, yeah. everybody came through there? Everyone did well? Yeah, it was really great. So quarantine is an area of Shed Aquarium that most of our animals um, make their first stop. It's their first home at Shed. Um, they're with us for maybe four to six weeks or as long as it takes for them to get comfortable in their new home. So they go through um, a nice acclimation period where it's nice and quiet and they can get used to their new home. Uh, we work with the animal health staff, all the veterinarians and the vet techs, um, a microbiologist, so that we can make sure that they get a clean bill of health and everything's good. Uh, we work with the nutritionist, make sure that they're eating what they need. Um, and then eventually, when they're all settled in and they're all good, we can ease them into the exhibits. And that's, and that's the animals that you'll see here. They've been at Shed for um, some time. They're already acclimated and they're ready to meet the public. Um, it's a really cool thing uh, that we do for animals. Not only does their health care... Um, do they get one-on-one -on -one health care? Um, but the exhibits were designed especially for them. So you got, you were more involved with the exhibit side of things, right. but everything is custom done here at Shed. Right. Uh, you mentioned that the animals come in and get, get acclimated. We've had animals, some animals for this exhibit for over a year now. And some were on yeah. loan, some were purchased, some were, some were collected by us uh, and with, other, with uh, cooperation through some of the universities. When we bring an animal in, we want to make sure we give it the best health, health care and best life, best life we can. And part of that is designing the right habitat for it, having the right foods for it, putting the right animals together. And we work for a long time to make that happen. We have over 31 exhibits, 46 species right now, I believe, and that will expand over time. Each one is individually designed for the animals, both from a viewpoint of uh, it looks different and trying to match some of their natural habitat areas so they feel more at home and, and will stay healthier for us. Um, I mentioned we have animals from uh, on loan from other zoos and aquariums. We have animals from around the country and literally from around the world that you can find here and no place else. The really cool thing to me about the exhibit like this is it's completely designed in-house. Uh, you won't see this anywhere else. It's not purchased or on loan from anyone else except for a few of the animals. But the habitats, the design, all the information uh, is one of a kind. So when you come to Shed to see this, you'll see this nowhere else. So I think that's a really cool fact about it. Yeah, and one of the, one of the factors about um amphibians and uh, what makes them so unique. I think amphibians touch everybody's lives. Everybody has this story about a frog or a tadpole or seeing a salamander. Um, sometimes even it's it's a singing frog um, on TV. But amphibians are so important to everyone and so they can be really hard to view in the wild. If you go on uh, a walk in a nature preserve or out to a, um, uh, a bottomlands area or, or a wetland you might not see a lot of amphibians and they're there and they're there in, in large numbers in many cases but they're really hard to find so at Shed we're hoping to make that connection for you you can come in you can see these animals face to face you can search the exhibits um, where the animals are comfortable and they're not all hiding all the time where you can you can get up close and personal with these make that connection realize what's in your backyard um, and maybe you'll be inspired to do a little something that you can do on your own um, Amphibians face a, a lot of problems out in the wilds. They can breathe through their skin, which is awesome. Um, but because they need that water and they breathe through their skin, they're really vulnerable to chemicals. They're vulnerable to runoff. Um, if you're using harsh detergents that get into the water streams, all of these things in our daily lives affect amphibians. Um, some things that you can do around Chicagoland to help out uh, amphibians is put in a rain barrel off of your gutter system or a rain garden um, and it slows down that runoff 
so that uh, the habitats for the amphibians are not affected as much. Right. Also, uh, reduced use of herbicides and uh, pesticides in your yard, those are all chemicals that can be very harsh to amphibians. Um, she mentioned there's a lot of different amphibians. There's actually about 6,000 different species worldwide, and amazingly enough, about 41% of those are either threatened or endangered for several reasons. As, as she mentioned, there's problems with uh, chemical introduction, introductions that can hurt them. There are uh, habitat loss, uh, lots of things like that that can really destroy the lives of amphibians. Another thing happening right now, there's a disease that was introduced in various spots around the world that has spread called chytrid. Um, what this does, it's a fungus that, as we mentioned, they have skin they can brew and burn through. What this does, it actually makes their skin harden up so they can't regulate the amount of water coming in and out of their body, so it winds up killing them. Um, so we like to be very careful when we bring animals and look at that. And anywhere you go, you got to be careful that if you've been to an area that is known to have chytrid in it, and when there's different spots around the world that have it, you don't want to introduce that to new places. So you need to be very careful when animals are moved or objects are moved uh, to keep that from happening. Any other medical issues you want to talk about with that? or? Yeah, well, and it's it's a big problem all around. And so I think the more people know about it, um, the more we know what um, is affecting these animals, the more we can do to help. Um, so Shed Aquarium is hoping that everyone can come here, can be inspired by all of the diversity, um, these amazing animals that are here, and then do something about it. Maybe um, if you learn a little bit more about all of the problems that uh, these guys are facing, um, you can do some things to help. Um, our website has a lot of information on it. You can go to uh, Shed Aquarium website, find out all kinds of things you can do um, for frogs here. Frogs, salamanders, right. um, all of the amphibians. Uh, so yeah, I think there's I think there's a lot to learn. And what we're realizing now, the scientific community, um, Shed Aquarium, other zoos and aquariums are still learning so much about these animals. Um, that's one of my favorite things about working here and about working with amphibians is we learn something new all the time. Um, they're amazing animals, and the more we work with them, the more we're sharing knowledge with other um, places that have kept them with other researchers that are studying them and we're all sharing this information and, and we're learning things that right. you know we didn't know before. Speaking of learning new things, um, a lot of people don't know that right in the water outside the aquarium is a large amphibian, one of the larger amphibians in the state, uh, the mud puppy. It gets that name because it tends to bark. It sounds like a little puppy when it barks. It's an amphibian. It's about a foot long when it's full grown um, and they're actually very active in the winter time, which is pretty rare in that very cold water. They live in lakes around actually used to be fairly common, but now they're threatened, uh, again, for the same reasons due to pollution and habitat loss. But we actually have partnered with Southern Illinois Youth University with a researcher down there, and she's doing her graduate work on uh, where they live, where uh, areas they inhabit, what they eat. And it's really funny that, you know, next to one of the largest met metropolitan areas in the country, these animals live when there's very little is known about them. So it's, there's lots of things that can still be learned about amphibians, and hopefully we can spark that interest and get uh, people into the project, into the exhibit, and get more and more excited about these animals. Yeah, mud puppies are are really awesome species um, for many reasons. They're threatened in Illinois, so it's great that we're learning more about them, and we found this you know population that can be watched. Um, they're also really unique because we talk about metamorphosis and it's something that makes amphibians really unique. But they are one species that does not go through a complete metamorphosis. There's always an exception to every rule. Every, there's um, so many exceptions to amphibians. Yeah. Every, they, all, they all do this, but they all Except do that. Except for, that yeah. and, so, and amphibians are just like that. And so it's, it's so exciting to work with these guys. Um, so as a, adults, they still have those external gills. Um, they look kind of bushy. Sometimes they, they look like the right. ears accompanying the mud puppy. Um, but they're external gills. It's uh, how they breathe. And it's, it's really unique. And so there's not a whole lot known about why the species doesn't morph into a different form. Uh, so there's more to be learned about that too. Really cool stuff. Yep. So there's lots to see, lots of fun things down here at the aquarium for the uh, amphibian exhibit coming up. It's opening up this Saturday, May 16th. And if you have any questions about the exhibit, you can go to our website, shedaquarium.org. And do you have anything else you'd like to say about it? No, be sure to check it out. We've got we've got so much uh, so much unique habitats, unique species. Uh, it's going to be really fun. All right. Thanks for joining us today. Great.